Welcome to EPG Pachala. My name is Asha Kutari Chaudhary and I'm a professor of English at Guwahati University. We are doing a course on Indian writing in English and the module that we are looking at now is going to consider Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children. Let us first look at a certain amount of biography to situate who Salman Rushdie was and how did he begin writing. Rushdie was born in Bombay in 1947 and belonged to a rich Muslim business family. He received his initial education at a private school in Bombay and later went to England at Rugby School in Warwickshire. Most of his famous works include Rhymus, 1975, Sheem, which came in 1983, Satanic Verses, that controversial book that we all know about comes in 1988, The Moor's Last Sigh in 1995, Shalimar the Crown that comes in 2005 and The Enchantress of Florence in 2008. Among his other works include Harun and the Sea of Stories that he wrote in 1990 in Good Faith, another work of 1990. Imaginary Homelands, essays and criticism that comes in between 81 to 91. The Ground Beneath Her Feet, that he writes in 1999. Fury, which comes in 2005. Step Across the Line, uh, collected non-fictional works that come out in 2002. Salman Rushdie received the Booker of Bookers Award for Midnight's Children in 1981. In this uh, book, Midnight's Children, which is perhaps one of the most celebrated books of all time, the protagonist of Midnight's Children is Salim, who is born on 15th August 1947. He narrates the story of his life's journey amidst the overarching events of India's history from the independence to partition and even beyond. The hybridity of India is well depicted through the plethora of, of a narrative heritage. There is extensive use of Hindu legends, Sufi metaphors, Christian and Muslim symbolisms, folk tales, oral narratives, stories of the Prophet Muhammad and Christ. Salim comments that there are many tales to tell which comprises of interconnected lives, miracles, various places, incidents, rumours and so on. The story of the novel is an account of Salim's life which coincides also with the story or the history of the nation. If you look at the narrative of Midnight's Children, we find that the protagonist of Midnight's Children, Salim, is a 30-year-old man who now narrates to Padma the story of his journey of life amidst the overarching events of India's history from the independence to partition and beyond. The novel charts the life history comprising three generations of the Sinai family. Salim's narrative begins with his grandfather's return to Kashmir in 1915. He describes the history of his family and the nation moving across time and space and ultimately brings everything to a culmination with the proclamation of his birth in Dr. Narlikar's nursing home on 15th of August 1947. From the beginning, Salim is aware of his destiny that is closely intertwined or tied up with his countries. Salim begins to hear different voices and soon he realizes that they are in reality voices of people who surround him. To his surprise, he realizes that he, he has been endowed with a special power that is telepathy through which he could easily connect with other children born on that exact moment on the midnight of India's independence. The other 
children of midnight also possess the same power in them and Salim using his own gift organizes a midnight children's conference. Through this we come across various problems confronting the newly formed nation. Every action that Salim seems to take is to determine the course of India's history and development and is in turn shaped by it. When we try to track the themes and the issues that Rushdie throws up in this novel, we look at, say, the role of history and the idea of myth that is apparently uh, uh, the two tropes upon which this novel rests. It is quite apparent that Midnight's Children is an interplay of history, myth, fantasy, it is also interesting to examine that the various incidents happening in the lives of the children born at midnight, born on the eve of independence uh, together at the same moment is greatly alike to the events taking place uh, in the history of the emerging nation, to the newly born nation. Lives of individuals are closely intertwined with these public events as well. The same happens with the Midnight's Children, where Salim Sinai, whose life is also interconnected with the unfolding events that take the nation in its way. As a consequence, Sinai feels himself bound up to a great extent, also handcuffed to history. The study of the family history of Salim Sinai's life provides a similar scenario to the history of the nation. Salim makes no difference between facts and gossip, history and legend, because he believes that many times it is legends that determine reality and is stronger than facts. Salim Sinai's memory constantly fails him and playfully provides excuses for factual mistakes and his fragmentary vision is represented by the perforated sheet that he acquires from his grandfather. Salim Sinai's fallible memory and fragmentary vision makes him perceive his own life and its meaning in fragments. He struggles to find coherence in the events of his past life but fails to provide a complete account of it. He tries hard to recuperate the past and its missing links, but all that he restores finally are provisional and incomplete and sometimes unstable things. With the help of his memory, he recaptures the past, but his narrative presents the truth, that is the truth of the memory, which chooses, exaggerates, removes, glorifies and eventually forms its own alternate realities. The narrative comprises of two main episodes, the one that is of Salim's life and the other that is the tale of the nation. The various historical episodes which find exposure in this novel are that of the Quit India movement, the movement of the Muslim League, riots, the five-year plans, the Bangladesh liberation, stealing of the relic of the Hazrat Bal Mosque and many more. Salim's time of birth is similar to the moment of the birth of the nation and the connection that is formed between the two cannot be separated as it's seen in the novel. Salim's life is intertwined on the one hand with Shiva, his other self, with whom he got exchanged during his birth and on the other hand with that of the history of the country. The history that is described in the novel is not the exact history but a version of it merely. Midnight's Children is a wonderful mix of historical and mythical elements. Myth incorporates the use of fantasy and the archetype as well. According to Salman Rushdie, Fantasy works into the structure of the novel so as to give an alternate perspective of history. The most apparent use of fantastic elements is seen in the 1001 Midnight's Children, 
who are all gifted with unusual talents and features. Unfortunately, many of them die due to disease or misfortune and only 581 children survive by 1957. And these are considered attractive and awe-inspiring by the others in one way or the other. Salim narrates tales about many of them and they all constitute elements of fantasy. Moreover, we come across many bizarre, sometimes grotesque and fantastic creatures in the novel. There are the beast human, the, the witches, the humans with extraordinary powers who live with normal human beings. Many of these characters undergo state of change and sometimes we even see some sort of metamorphosis taking place. And here, for example, one can talk of the transformation scene in Salim when he joins the Pakistani army and is made a she-dog for tracking purposes. The murder of Mia Abdullah is also narrated in fantastic terms by Salim. He says, six new moons came into the room, six crescent knives held by people dressed all in black with covered faces. Two men held Nadir Khan while the others moved towards the hummingbird. Unquote. Rashdi's Midnight's Children makes use of India's past traditions, which includes various mythical characters, events, fairy tales, folklores, and so on. At the same time, it also explores the contemporary situation of India during the period and the two elements of myth and history are juxtaposed quite brilliantly. The account of an individual's life is linked with the social history of India through the use of myth. The contemporary history of India is created by extensive use of myths which is often demystified and given a modernized touch according to the need of the text. According to Nagesh Chaturvedi, and I am quoting here, eventually the novel derives a mythical framework of narrative which helps the novelist bring out the deeper relevance of the historical political situation obtaining in the Indian subcontinent." Unquote. Now the use of mythical patterns is evident in the framing of all the chapter headings. Many mythical references are given in the novel where we have the Ravan gang which is involved in the pre-partition communal violence. Again, Padma has also been referred to as the goddess Lakshmi, the lotus goddess of the present dung flown. There are also references to the Mahabharata, especially that of Lord Brahma. The myth of Brahma is introduced in relation to the conference of the Midnight's children, taking place in the mind of Salim, which is called as the dream web of Brahma. Rushdi regards the post-independent period of India as the Kali Yuga. This is a strong reason behind depicting the period as steeped in violence and corruption, a period which is shown as dark and compromising of many evils in society. The burden of history is an important issue that is self-evident in the novel. The protagonist, Salim, believes that when an individual is born, he does not come to this world alone, but that, that there are a lot of other things that accompany him thereafter. And therefore, Salim says that he has too many stories to tell, too many places, events and miracles to be told. He moreover feels himself handcuffed to history and a sense of its burden that he has to carry always. Salim narrates his own personal tale, which we know is far removed from the personal, as his life and fate is determined and tied to the fate of the nation. He finds himself crumbling down under the weight that history puts upon him. Many events in history, starting from World War I till the end of the emergency, has the some connection or the other with the personal life of Salim and his family leaves always an impression upon it. For example, the birth of a new India 
coincides with the birth of Selene, a midnight child. He then experiences a crack in his skin when he narrates the incidents of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Dr. Aziz gets a glimpse of Naseem's face, his patient, whom he marries later on the day the First World War ends. Salim's 10th birthday and the 10th year of India's independence unfolds a sense of loss for both. Salim discovers his mother's infidelity, whereas India is marked by natural disasters like floods and droughts. There are many such incidents that one could relate moments in personal and public history via the narrative of Midnight's Children. The narrative structure that Rashdi employs is the first person narrative. His narrator is Salim. He is conscious of his important historical role where his destiny is intertwined with the destiny of the country. His narrative gives an account of his life as well as projects, the life of the nation, both of which are intertwined. This provides the basic structure and form for the novel and the narrator looks for history, facts, fancy to make his narrative comprehensible. At the beginning of the novel, he makes it clear that there are a lot of stories, knotted lives, events that he would like to discuss. While Salim gives an account of the life and the nation, the narrator also searches for meaning and form, which helps to hold the narrative together. Rashdi has made use of Indian traditions and myths and the concept of storytelling as seen in Panchatantra. The language of the novel varies from the use of colloquial to eloquent speech. Salim uses, in his narrative mode, a whole new set of words that will help him to find a convenient way in letting out his ideas and emotions involved in the process of storytelling. There is a touch of Indianness found in this narrative, which is made possible by introducing words such as Angrez, Dunya, Talaq, Yar, Chamcha, Jihad, Fantouche, uh, Doctrinant and many such. The narrative is in a non-linear mode, which is in keeping with a non-chronological time frame of the story that is being narrated by Salim. Having gone through most of the narrative structures, themes and other uh, trajectories that the novel looks at, let us consider a few questions. This is not really a very simple, realistic, naturalistic novel. It employs a uh, uh, it employs what we now refer to as magic realism. It has a structure that uh, overlaps uh, histories and personal histories and does various interesting avant-garde things to the genre of the novel. So what are some of the important questions that we could think about when we think about Midnight's Children? The first, of course, would be how is the idea of history and politics woven into the structure of the text via the personal. How does the narrator become involved personally in the narrated events? Midnight's Children is about fragmented identities in a world that offers no hope or very little hope. What can we do to understand this novel in terms of identities that are split up. Just as a country that splits up, uh, you have a very interesting superimposition of the idea of, of people's identities also being split up just like the map of India splits. What is the role that women play in this novel? It is a, a, a novel which is definitely written by a man, narrated by a man, and there are a few female characters. How does the gendering of the specific characters, women who are also children of midnight, what happens to them? How, how do they play a certain kind of role within this narrative, within the discourse that the novel sets forth? Rashti does not follow conventional narrative strategies in the novel. So how do, do his new ideas and techniques 
uh, that he employs in this novel work. Uh, is there any way in which we are, we are able to find that he is making a certain flawed judgment in terms of the narrative that he is structuring in a particular way? So the personal and national tragedy that he is exploring via this structure, via his characters, via his employment of mythology and so on, history, mythology, all of this in a kind of palimpsestic uh, resonance is what makes uh, mag magic realism and so on, that makes the whole of this novel come alive and makes Midnight's Children among the greatest books that have been written in the 20th century. Please do consider these questions in your reading of Midnight's Children. Thank you.